today's lab, we're going to create a graphical user interface for the Teamsy. What we're actually going to do is we're going to send comments to the TNC to change the color of the LED that we're going to connect to it. At the same time, we're also going to connect a potentiometer to the TNC simulating some kind of a sensor. And if we turn that potentiometer, we want the TNC to report its changed value back to the Raspberry Pi. Now you can see that these two types of events can happen independently, right? I mean, if the user interacts with the graphical user interface, he can cause the LED to change, but an external event, such as turning the potentiometer, can cause the TNC to asynchronously or independently send a response back to the Raspberry Pi. This presents a problem for the graphical user interface. Thus far, the graphical user interfaces we have created, you give the execution over to the GUI library. And when the user interacts, a previously registered callback function is called. This is not really a problem if the only thing we want to do is to send Teensy comments that change the LED. The problem is that the TNC itself can decide to send a report on a changed potentiometer value. How are we going to be able to intercept that since the GUI has the execution? This is when threads can become helpful. A single process actually doesn't have to use a single thread of execution. A process can have several parallel threads running at the same time. And these threads can be very helpful. We can actually have a thread that deals with the GTK main loop and another thread in the same process that listens on the serial port for incoming bytes. Now, there are many threading libraries for operating systems. We're going to be focusing here on the glib threading libraries that were originally developed for GTK+. Threading is a really, really powerful concept. And if you are interested in learning a little bit more there is a Wikipedia page that you can check out. In GTK+, Plus, there is actually a restriction on which threads can operate the graphical user interface. Although you can have many, many threads working in parallel, only the main thread can access any of the widgets in a GTK graphical user interface. So if you have several threads, how do you communicate between threads? Since threads are within the same process, it can use the resources of that process. The, the easiest way actually to communicate between threads is to use variables that are seen by all threads. These variables are usually global variables. However, imagine the situation where two threads are trying to access the same variable at the same time, since they may be running in parallel. So one of them tries to write to it and the other is trying to read. What happens if during the write, another thread is trying to read it? This is going to result in an undefinable behavior. In computer science, we call this a race condition. Mutexes are arguably the simplest way to synchronize threads, thus uh, keeping two threads from interfering with each other when reading and writing the same variable. Mutexes are variables themselves that are supported usually by the operating system. After you create a mutex, you can lock or unlock a mutex, and only the thread that locks a mutex should be able to unlock it. At the same time, trying to lock a mutex that has already been locked by another thread will result in the second thread that are trying to lock it being blocked until the mutex is unlocked by the first thread. So, we use mutexes to protect variables. In general, any variable that is being used in more than one thread should have its own mutex. And then, the way to actually protect this variable is to lock the mutex responsible for protecting this variable, do anything to the variable, change it, read it, write it, and then once you are done with handling that variable, unlock the mutex that is protecting this. As I mentioned before, in GTK+, Plus, only the main thread can access any of the widgets. So how do you actually modify 
any of the user interface information from other threads. What you do is you establish variables that the main thread and all the other threads can share, global variables. You protect all of them with mutexes. And in the main GTK thread, you establish a periodically awakening callback function. And this function gets called periodically by the main thread, can check any of the global variables that the other threads have modified, and update the graphical user interface accordingly. So with that, first we're going to look at what is expected of you for this lab, and then we're going to create the circuit, and then you can go ahead and modify the codes in order to finish the lab. So here is a quick demonstration. I'm going to start the GUI. On this GUI now, we can open a serial port and if everything goes all right, by moving this slider, we can adjust red, green, to blue, create all kinds of different colors. If I want to, I can also enter numerical values here. and click on send and now it's all red you can see that the sliders got adjusted after I did this you can also see what the string is that we are sending over to the theme C and finally if I grab the potentiometer here you can see that the TNC sends the ADC value and here on the client we convert it into a voltage and displayed. So this goes from pretty much 0 to 3.3 volts. Here's the user interface. You can see that you're going to have to put in a entry field where you can type in serial interfaces ID, have an open device and close device buttons. You see that on my interface the close device is disabled when the device is not opened and vice versa. You should be able to enter RGB values between 0 and 255 into each one of these fields. And when you send over this information to the TNZ, the LEDs should come on, as well as you should display the string that you actually sent over. You will also have to put on sliders and be able to move these sliders and when you move the sliders you can see that the text input fields change the tech the transmission string changes but also the TNZ is changing the color with which it lights up the LED and finally this is going to be the second part with the potentiometer on the TNZ you should be able to read it and display the red value as a voltage down here. For that, we will have to look at multi-threading because that will require a separate thread reading from the serial port. We have designed graphical user interfaces before, but we have never inserted a slider on it. It's actually called scale in Glade and we're gonna see how to do that. I'm gonna start off Glade. We're gonna create a window. Inside this window we're gonna create a few containers and now we're gonna find the scale 
button here I'm gonna insert it here and don't be surprised that it doesn't show up nicely so what we need to do is first we need to select whether it's vertical or horizontal I'm gonna make this horizontal and the next thing to do is click on this adjustment each slider has to have an adjustment structure associated with it and the way to do that in Glade is to click here click on new and it creates an adjustment you can see that this turned into a slider and you can see that up here now there is an adjustment so when I click on this adjustment one now I can see the default value of it the minimum value the maximum value for example I can change this to 255 the step increment and the page increment if we are using page up on it going back to the scale itself we can round it to uh, two digits and the fill level is to what maximum value we allow the user to pull it previously we have said that the entire stretch of it is 255 and the last thing to do with it is to go to signals and it inherits some properties from GTK range and the one function that you wanna register here is the value changed function that's the function that's gonna be called whenever you grab that slider and you move its value somewhere else We're going to build our circuit for lab 9. Here's our Teensy board. We're going to be using the same RGB LED we used for lab 7. The longest pen is the common anode. The one next to it standing by itself is red. Then on the other side we have green and blue. We're going to try to insert this so that the common anode is in the red rail. while the others are in those three columns. Contrary to lab seven, we're gonna be using three different resistors of two different sizes because the red LED actually has a less bias than the other two. That's only 2.1 volts, so we need to use a larger resistor for that. We're gonna be using a 270 ohm resistor to connect the red connect to the red pin of the LED there we go and we're gonna be using 47 ohm resistors to connect to green and blue now we need to connect the anode to the 3.3 volts coming out of the Teensy. That's one, two, that's the third one from here. I'm gonna connect it to this red rail. And finally, we need to connect the LEDs red to pin number 21. That's one, two, three done from here. Green to pin number 22 and finally blue to pin number 23 so we have the LED connected we also want to add the potentiometer I usually bend up the legs like this the potentiometer is gonna go here and now we're gonna connect it The far right side of it goes to plus, which is already done here. The far left side of it goes to ground, which is this pin of the Teensy. 
and finally the middle pin the slider pin of the potentiometer is gonna go to a0 which is 14 up here our circuit is almost done we need to plug the USB cord into it and it's ready for experimenting <laughs>